I'm Mike, and today, are Cowspiracy's facts real? Cowspiracy is a super effective movie. Many people are literally just going vegan on the spot after watching Cowspiracy. But there are also people that are claiming that it is completely built upon exaggerated statistics. So in this video, we're gonna look at some of the most important statistics in the film, where they came from, and how they compare to other sources that were not used in the movie. A movie which some people think should be ignored altogether. Like this article, six reasons to ignore the Cowspiracy and eat a burger which was written by Beef Magazine, and included gems of superior logic such as, quote, Did Americans feel bad about participating in the Ice Bucket Challenge? As they poured water over their heads to raise money for a cause. No, I don't know how to use commas. Yes, comparing the wasting of 56% of our fresh water to grow feed to raise meat purely for pleasure is directly comparable to using a negligible amount of water to publicize a debilitating and underappreciated disease. These types of arguments are all too common, but I think it's time to look at what people have actually criticized about the movie, the statistics themselves. Let's start with water. The water statistic that people seem to have an issue with in Cowspiracy is that it takes 2,500 gallons of water to produce just one pound of beef. Let's look at what the Cowspiracy website had to say about this. The amount of water used to produce one pound of beef varied greatly from 442 to 8,000 gallons. We choose to use in the film the widely cited conservative number of 2,500 gallons per pound of U.S. beef from Dr. George Bergstrom, chairman of the Food Science and Human Nutrition Department of the College of Agriculture, and yeah, some, some legit dude. See, up until Cowspiracy, people were really just myopically looking at what livestock actually used on the farm themselves. So someone could go to this U.S. government website and see that Texas, who uses more water for livestock than any other state, only uses 13% of its water. But, 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 they do not count the amount of water that goes into producing the grain. Quote, livestock water use is water associated with livestock watering, feedlots, dairy operations, and other on-farm needs. You have to follow the meat all the way back up the supply chain chain to the grain and the feed and everything. According to this Cornell report, the U.S. feeds the majority of all of its grain to livestock. So you have to add up all of the water used to grow all of that grain. Let's look a little bit behind the numbers. Remember Cowspiracy said 2,500 gallons per pound. Looking at the beef lobby, of course they choose about 441 gallons per pound. But since corn alone to grow requires 150 gallons per pound, and beef, quote, converts six pounds of feed into one pound of gain, and people only eat about half of the cow, then it should be about 12 times as water intense to make beef than it is to make corn. Then you have to add the water that they actually use or drink, and then also the water used by the feedlot, and the water used by processing. And if you're feeding them soy, then it's about twice as much water than corn, and about 78% of cattle are factory farmed, so all of this is very relevant and realistic. And I don't think anybody here is arguing against the importance of conserving water, especially people in California, where, like the rest of the U.S., the majority of water is used to grow feed for animal agriculture. So, when looking at cowspiracy and their use of water statistics, they are absolutely reasonable. Now for what could be the most important statistics in the whole movie, that 18 to 51% of greenhouse gas emissions are from animal agriculture. That 18% figure is from the United Nations FAO back in 2006 from the paper Livestock's Long Shadow, but a lot of people are saying that it's out of date and the FAO now says it's 14.5%. How did this happen? Well, it just so turns out that the FAO sold out to the meat and dairy industry in the form of partnerships with the Meat Secretariat and the International Dairy Federation, which happened in 2012. When did their statistic change? 2013. But what about that shocking 51% figure from that World Watch report? Who funded that? Well, it turns out that the World Bank's International Finance Corporation partially funded that, and they are in no way a vegan organization. And one of the researchers that worked on it actually had a New York Times op-ed in which they said, quote, the key difference between the 18% and 51% figures is that the latter accounts for how exponential growth in livestock production, now more than 60 billion land animals per year, accompanied by large scale deforestation and forest burning, have caused a dramatic decline in the Earth's photosynthetic capacity, along with large and accelerating increases in volatilization of soil carbon. In other words, the 60 billion land animals that we raise every year is having such an effect on the planet that it's actually screwing with the balance of carbon sequestration and the carbon cycle. 
The question is, how does this affect the world so much? Well, let's take a look at population. The human population right now is about 7 billion people. But looking at livestock, we can see that we have about 1.43 billion cattle, 1.87 billion sheep and goats, almost a billion pigs, and 19.6 billion chickens. So when it was all added up, the livestock biomass is about three times that of humans. Yes, some of those are pasture fed, but it is worth noting that chickens, tiny little chickens eat 1,300 to 1,500 calories per pound a day. They are being overfed to grow as fast as possible. So just one one pound, one and a half pound chicken is gonna be eating as much as a human being. And since 99.99% of chickens are factory farmed, this is a huge issue. Anyway, all of this should come together to create a picture that whether it's 14 and a half, 18 or 51 percent of greenhouse gases from animal agriculture, it is one of the leading causes and we have zero nutritional requirement for animal products, making it completely unnecessary. And by looking at this chart, you can see why you cannot be an environmentalist and still eat animal products. All right, now moving on to what could be one of the most shocking statistics in the whole movie that up to 91% of rainforest deforestation is caused by animal agriculture. And it's worth noting here that they use the words up to, meaning that it could be lower, but that's one of the reported numbers. Looking elsewhere, the Greenpeace of Brazil says 80% is from animal agriculture. The lowest I've been able to find looking around is 60%. So yes, Kaspersky did choose an up to the highest possible statistic angle here, but the majority in either case is caused by animal agriculture, whether it's 60, 80, or 91%, and therefore it is not enough to dismiss the entire movie and keep eating animal products as if nothing happened, as if nothing's changed. And so really, it's what we do with our fork. All right, now for a bonus round, looking at some other crazy anti cowspiracy logic, starting with this article who quoted a random blogger with, quote, veganism will not eliminate dead zones in the Gulf of Mexico. In fact, much of these are the result of nitrogen fertilizers flowing from soybean, tofu, fake meat, and corn monocrops covering the Midwest blaming tofu and fake meat for the dead zones. Again, according to this Cornell article, the majority of grain are grown in the US for animal agriculture as feed. And only 6% of soybeans are turned directly into food, only a small percentage of which become tofu or fake meat. On top of that, according to the EPA, all the manure from animal agriculture and feeding operations is way more than all of the sewage in the entire US, plus a dairy farm of only 2,500 cows produces the same amount of waste as a city of 411,000 people, or for example, Miami, Florida. So it just so happens to be the case that if everybody went vegan, yes, we would reduce the size of the dead zones by say 50 to 80%. In the end, the statistics in the movie are absolutely reasonable. And even if you are choosing lower tier statistics like the ones we compared to, the call to dietary action is really no less dire. And in the end, it's a movie about how people are ignoring the extreme damages of animal agriculture to the world. So they're not going to say, oh, a beef burger uses as little as 440 gallons per pound of water. So how about just deal with it? And it seems that in many cases, they could have chosen even more intense statistics to make the situation become more dire and make it more dramatic. But it seems to me that people's objection to all these statistics just really comes from a lack of understanding of the scale of animal agriculture. Most people are in cities. I spent most of my life in the rural Midwest where pretty much every square inch of land is covered by feed for animals in the form of corn or soy and every few miles you smell a super intense animal feeding operation scent that just literally makes you want to throw up. So animal agriculture is huge and unnecessary, so next time somebody is not having the statistics from Cowspiracy, send them to this video. And that's it for today. If you don't want to miss the next one, don't forget to subscribe, and thank you for watching.